Okay, so yesterday I asked my followers what personality type they would be if not the one they are today. And then I asked what's stopping you from being that personality type right now. Now the reason I'm asking this question to you INTP today is because I'm asking you what INTP mistype you would be. If you didn't know you were an INTP, if you ended up mistyping, what personality type would you mistype as? Now, to know this, to understand this, I have the flow code, and I use the flow code to type people, and with the flow code, your personality type is who you are in a state of flow. And that means we can put out all the personality types on a chessboard, and we can put them down on a spectrum, and we can see kind of in ourselves what spectrum we are on inside this personality type. And we can understand that this personality type and our behavior is affected by our mood and our emotional state. Yes, even you as an INTP have an emotional state. You can be more or less anxious, more or less confident. You can be more or less bored or energetic. You can be more or less motivated or more or less uh, stressed. And so if you understand the spectrum, this is the most important thing. Understand the four general directions of change inside of yourself. Understand how anxiety, negativity, stress and boredom can affect your personality type and affect your flow state. Now the first thing you want to see is, okay, when I am the most confident in myself, the most energetic, the most curious, the most passionate, the most uh, stable and centered in myself, and the most confident in my ability, I am an INTP. And that's how I know I am an INTP, because that's how I act when I feel at my best. So then you can understand that there are things that can happen. You can move along this chessboard into other personality types. Today I'm asking you, what personality type are you today? What are you feeling right now? And how are you acting as an INTP? And in which direction do you tend to move? We have, you can talk about people that are more prone to stress. And INTPs that are more prone to stress are going to appear more strong in their judging preference than the ordinary INTP. If the ordinary INTP is somebody who likes to compare and contrast ideas and theories and to think originally of new ideas, new viewpoints and new perspectives, the judging influence is that kind of stressor to commit to one destination and to work hard on a theory or an idea and to discipline and focus yourself to sit down with this and do the maths and do the numbers and to not get distracted by other contrasting perspectives. As an INTP you're often distracted by different perspectives but you don't even think of it as being distracted. Most of the time you think of it as being curious. And that's what makes you an INTP, while INTJs would consider that, oh, distractions, an INTP would go, oh, that's interesting. And so, to an INTP, it's an interesting what-if that should be explored, and often INTPs believe that by exploring this option, and by looking down this eventuality, and by thinking about this, I am making the world a better place. Every personality type is driven by this cru crucial principle mission of making the world better and making it better by being myself and doing what my personality type does best. And everything else that happens, everything else I do can threaten the world. So when you look down on anxiety, anxiety is really interesting because when INTPs become anxious, they become rushed. So they feel that they have to scramble to get things done. They have to move quicker. They have to think faster. It's that pressure as an INTP when you are moving towards extroversion. You are feeling rushed. And the fact that you are feeling rushed is also a giveaway that you are an introvert. Because extroverts wouldn't think of it as being rushed. They would think of it as being pulled to something. And so... <laughs> When you go down that road as an ITP, you feel that you are forced to speed up and to move faster than you would want to. And you feel beyond that that you are making mistakes as you go down that road. You worry you don't want to be rushed because you're afraid of making mistakes or doing things you shouldn't do. You are naturally cautious and methodical, but the deadlines and things around you might push you to move faster. And by moving faster, it is also pushing you to make more mistakes that you could have avoided if you had more chance to think about it.
another thing to look at is boredom because boredom and uh, being drained or not getting enough sleep in a day or uh, being generally tired or doing things that you find to be boring or taxing on you that will pull you down into sensing and sensory territory what you find interesting as an intuitive sensors find dead boring most of the time sensors will find uh, anything an intp is talking about to be kind of trivial or pointless or speculative but an INTP considers it fascinating and full of potential and important to look at because it's like this really interesting theory that could really change our world and could really make a difference. And so as an INTP, when you're bored or if you don't get enough sleep in a day or if you're feeling lack of energy, you become more like a sensory type. You become a bit more focused on the details. You become, you struggle to conceptualize. You feel a bit... Uh, like off-center, you feel a bit more off-grid, you feel taxed or you feel you don't have the time to engage in your theories because you have important things to do. You have chores that need to be taken care of, you have things that you have to do, people you have to talk to, work that has to be done, so you don't have the time right now to look at or consider these really fascinating theories. So often you feel that you are kind of forced to put them aside while you work on the more important things like your day-to-day -day routine. The final factor is negativity, and that's just any kind of quitter mentality. It's any kind of, oh, it's not going to work out, it's not going to happen, it's not possible, it will just cause problems, it will only be an issue. And uh, when INTPs, as thinking types, are pulled into feeling, often it comes with the sense of... Uh, like a negativity or fear of failure or fear of difficulty or struggle. If an INTP gives in to this fear of causing conflict or drama or of being afraid of saying something they shouldn't, they go into feeling. If that's like, oh, I have this really interesting idea or viewpoint or this like direct comment I want to make, but I don't want to offend anyone's feelings or say something people might disagree with, that's when you move towards feeling and so when you move in this direction you can feel like an, an increased negativity and also like if you've just had some failures lately or if you've had some struggles or uh, some things haven't turned out the way you do you can also become a bit more like a feeling type and you become a negative feeling type so while uh, INFJs and ENFJs and ESFJs are positive feeling types. INTPs are negative feeling types. So often they give in to a more negative expression of feeling and more uh, like uh, daydreaming about uh, failure or struggles or problems that are going to come up or uh, having negative thoughts or ex expectations on people or expecting for people to betray you or to be uh, rude to you or to yeah treat you badly having like these fantasies about bad things that could happen to you so INTPs will most commonly move towards one of their sibling types and the sibling types are types that share similar preferences to you but are slightly different on a cognitive basis or on a dichotomy basis so you have ENTPs, INFPs, INTJs and ISTPs INTPs will often be forced to take on the roles of one of these four types and they can do it. It's not that difficult. They can be a bit more INFP-like, a bit more ENTP-like, a bit more ISTP-like or a bit more INTJ-like. They can be like INTJs when they are in work mode. They can be like ISTPs when they are pushing for finishing something or meeting a deadline or working through a task or uh, getting everything done and getting to action. Like if they feel, oh, I need to take action, I need to get something done, I have to put something down on paper, then they can be a bit more ISTP-like. They can be like ENTPs if they feel like rushed. Oh, I have to do this fast, I have to be done with this in 10 minutes, I have to get this done now, I have to move quickly, I have to think on my feet then I can go into more an ENTP-like state. They can also go into a more INFP-like state if it's like, uh, I can't do this now, it's gonna cause storm or be misunderstood, they're taking the wrong way and I have to consider other people's feelings and uh, see things from other people's perspectives. And so that can put you into an INFP state. The other states you can talk about is, for example, um, for example, you have the ESTP state. So if you are in like in an inquiry state, you have to see what's going on in the real world. You have to get some real feedback. You have to check in with the world and what's happening around you. 
uh, you have to go interrogate some people, talk to some people, get some data. <laughs> That's more an ESTP-like state. If you are in a state of uh, needing to uh, rather check in with yourself, uh, go inside, introspect for a bit, uh, and stop on your work for a while and take some take a moment to go inside and clear up your feelings you'll go into more of an INFJ like state if you for example go into more of a feeling of uh, being different or being unusual to other people or not feeling understood you may might take on more of like an ENFP black sheep role in a group and uh, finally we can talk about uh, the ISTJ state. So if you feel that you are in a state of uh, yeah, being forced to do something you don't like to do or feeling like you're put in a role and that you have duties and obligations that need to be done, you can be a bit more ISTJ-like exploring these things. And of course, you're not going to be an ISTJ. You're going to be a bored and stressed ISTJ. So while an ISTJ doing the exact same activity as you would be like, yeah, this is interesting and oh, this is really cool. Now I got to work on this and oh, nice to have discipline and focus and to have a routine. You're like, oh, I have to get this done and oh no, it's, I really don't like this and oh, this is really difficult and really annoying, but I have to get it done so that later on I can go explore theories and think about ideas and discuss different possibilities. You know, because an INTP is really a person that loves to discuss and cause, uh, like to explore disagreements and different viewpoints and perspectives. So why do you think that? I don't think that way. I think this is more likely. And how come you feel that way? Or how come you think that way? Or why do you, what are your arguments for thinking that? That's completely ludicrous to me. INTPs, they like to really go into this mode of seeing, okay, how do things work? Why do they work the way they do? And how can people have such different opinions about these things? I mean, to me, it's obvious. If you run the maths, if you think about it logically, you can figure it out and it's quite clear what the right answer is. INTPs are, however, people, they are fascinated by different ideas and perspectives. But that theory thinks that, and that's completely different to what this theory thinks. And how can these theories think th and see the world so differently? Both cannot be true at the same time. So why are they considering this in this way? As an INTP, it's that curiosity that really makes you an intuitive. And like that perfectionistic, positive perfectionism of going like, Oh, I can make this better. I can do that better. I can be smarter about that. I can think of a better answer. That idea, that search for originality. Oh, I want to come up with something that is original, different to what everyone else thinks, yet correct, yet better, yet smarter, yet more, uh, like, more important than what anybody else has ever thought before. I can see and reach a conclusion or an idea or an answer that's going to, once again, save the world, make the world a better place, fix an issue in society. Because, you know, everybody's thinking, how do I fix the world? How do I make the world better? How do I improve my society? How do I improve my world and my home and my conditions around me? Everyone is always thinking, how do I save, save, save by being myself? And of course, we have to mention the INTP at their worst, the ESFJ state. So when INTPs go into an ESFJ-like state, it's that full-blown, I give up, I'm not going to find an answer, it's not going to work out, I have no time, people will just misunderstand me, people won't get it, people are going to be stupid, people are not going to realize how right I am. Uh, I can't figure it out, I don't have the time, I have so much to do, I have so much on my shoulders, so much uh, demands, uh, people are just going to turn against me, society, the group is going to judge me and going to think I'm an idiot, everybody's going to go against me. You know, so you see this like ESFJ-like thinking pattern, but inverse, you know, while ESFJs think, oh, everybody likes me, everyone's my friend, I can connect with anybody, I'm really able to be understood by anyone around me. INTPs go into that negativity of people are not going to get me, people are going to turn against me, people are going to think I'm stupid, people are going to judge me. And so 
that's the difference between these two types and that's why an INTP can't be an ESFJ. It's so hardwired in our emotions. Our type is hardwired in our emotions. I call it the flow code. Really, your type is in your feelings and if you figure out your feelings and your emotional states, you can figure out your type. So what I encourage you to do right now is look at this infographic and then paint a kind of circle around the types that you can feel you fall into once in a while and find your spectrum. Find like, for example, yeah, I do go into ISFP sometimes. When do I do that? What makes me put in that role? And what does that come off in me? And I, when do I go into an ENFJ-like state? And in what situations? And in what situations do I go into an ENFP-like state? Can I do this differently? Can I manage that better? Can I change something in my environment or in my workplace so that I don't have to, so that I can uh, be more confident, have less stress in my life, and feel more emotionally stable and secure in my abilities. That's my tip to you as an INTP. And once again, what type do you think you are and what spectrum do you fell into here and which types can you identify with the most as an INTP? Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.